everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this week's Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 477. It is Thanksgiving. Not now, not when you're watching this, but when I'm taping this, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I hope you all had an amazing day with your friends, your family, your fur babies, your loved ones. I hope you had a, if you had a Friendsgiving, I hope you had a wonderful time. We are a very small family, Mr. SMS and I and the boys, so our Thanksgiving is very small. However, I bought a 24 pound turkey. I don't know why I bought a 24 pound turkey, but I sure did. And, um, well, it's in the oven right now and with any luck, by the time I'm done with this taping, it'll be done as well. So what do we have for you today? Well, I should be doing winner, winner, chicken dinner right now, but because it's a short week here at SMS and everybody had, we, we were only open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, everybody has Thursday and Friday off. No winner winners this week. There just wasn't enough time to get everything done because of course, Black Friday, also started already. So we have a Black Friday sale going. By the time you're seeing this, I have no idea what's left. We started our sale on Black Friday. Surprise, novelty. <laughs> so between getting all of that ready and processing orders and getting this YouTube class going, no time to pick winner winners, but have no fear. Stacy and Elena and James are here next week. Next week, James will make sure all the comments are approved. Elena will make sure they're exported and, and two random people, well actually by next week, it'll be four random people are selected and I will be here to deliver the grand news that four people have won a $25 gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple. So today, so no winner winner chicken dinner, but we all are winner winner chicken dinners if, if our turkey came out okay, I'm hoping, and we had a wonderful time with our family. And maybe, maybe you had Black Friday deals that you were looking to pick up at your local retailers and you were able to snag one of those amazing deals. So hopefully your weekend has just been lovely. Now today, what do we have for you? I have the next collection of Simply Defined Kaleidoscope dies. And my Kaleidoscope dies are layering dies. And so I only do three sets but inside each set is four separate dies. And each die is a full A2 size. So you're getting four A2 size dies in every set of kaleidoscope dies, layering dies. It's quite a value. And we have kept our prices. We did not raise our prices. We've kept our prices at $29.99 for all four dies. Now that is a holy smokes artichokes. And this month, this month, this month I definitely swung for the fences without question. I took a risk, I took a gamble, I I just changed things up. Since I do design dies every single month and I've been doing it for years and years now, you can kind of fall into a habit of redesigning the same thing again and again. And I'm, I'm aware of that because I'm also a retailer and I have to buy product for our online store and our retail store. Yes, we have a retail store here in sunny California in Santa Clarita, which you may have been hearing about on the news because we're having a wind event and technically I could lose power at any moment and here I am and then I'm not. <laughs> or our turkey could be half baked. <laughs> So, so I, as a retailer, I'm buying product all the time and I absolutely can see where manufacturers kind of, they find something good and they continue with it. Like they'll, they'll do the same version 14 different ways because it sold really well the first time. And I get that. That's a, I get that. That's an easy way to keep new product coming. But when I design, I try not to fall into that that easy peasy way of just getting product out there. I really want to be different and being different is hard sometimes. You talk about designer block or writer's block. I don't want everybody to think, oh, I just saw that from her two months ago. No, so I take risks without question. I gamble, sometimes the gambles pay off and well, sometimes they don't and when they don't, you'll see my dies on sale. <laughs> and a 
other times they sell out in 24 hours. It just depends. But I'd rather be a risk taker and try something new and, and bring you something fresh than just, I know I can do pretty. I can probably do pretty all day long florals and butterflies and all sorts of I do I do sophisticated pretty tends to be my aesthetic and and sure I could I could lean into that all the time but then wouldn't you get tired of it I would get tired of it I know as a retailer buying product for the store it's like oh, can they have a new eye it's like TV shows right where they keep doing reboots of movies and TV shows because there's nothing fresh out there. So I'm hoping even if this collection is not for you, you appreciate the fact that I swung for the fences for sure. Now, each of these dies has a meaning to me. I did one of them for my dad. I did one of them for Michael's family. And then I did the last one for Michael himself. And, and that's how I came to came to decide which I was going to design, how I was going to do it. So, so today it's all about sophisticated kind of sports, but not in a, not in a cutesy childish way. However, you can use them for youth and teens and little ones. Well, maybe except for the golf one because my, well, so the football one is for my dad. You'll see I have a football guy and you're like, oh, I'm already out. Wait, you've got to watch the technique. It's not just about the dies. The dies are the vehicle to show you the technique. <laughs> it's like the bread is the vehicle to get the butter. <laughs> So I have a football, a football set, which is totally my dad, because many of you know, I've told you before, my family was a football family, huge football family. From the time I was born, my dad was coaching Pop Warner, my brother was playing, my mom was team mom, my, my, my sisters were stat girls and water girls, and when I was finally old enough to be a little Pop Warner cheerleader, I was a cheerleader. And then my dad moved to high school um, coaching and my brother was captain of the Canyon High football team. And I was like eight years old and they had me dressed up. I was the little mascot for Canyon High and I had my own little cheerleader costume. And now I'm 54, so this is a long time ago. But we were totally a football family. That was our life. Three days a week for Pop Warner practice and then games and my dad, then high school, it was an everyday thing. Michael, my husband, on the other hand, was a baseball family. So everything I just said about my, my family in football, just change it into baseball. Michael's mom ran the concession stand for Little League and Michael's dad coached and umpired and Michael's brother when he stopped playing when he aged out for playing little league umpired and and it was the whole family and they all went off to practice several days a week and then games on saturday and because they ran the concession stand they were there all day for all the games and and michael would say yeah you go into our garage and there would be nothing i mean boxes and boxes of stuff for the concession stand so so where my family was totally football Michael's family was the exact same, only for baseball. And then Michael himself, he is a golfer, or he was a golfer. And you would think, well, he would play baseball for the high school team, right? Nope. He was on the golf team and he was a soccer player. <laughs> so I did a golfer in honor of my husband, Michael. And Michael played golf for a very, very long time through our marriage. And, um, and eventually he had to stop. But, but he was a big avid golfer and I mean, I just remember going and getting, there was a specific driver he wanted. I don't know, it was called like a big Bertha. I, I must have been 26 years old and I'm like, what the heck is this big Bertha? It's a driver. I don't even know if they still make big Bertha drivers, but let me, he had Callaway clubs. In fact, when his dad passed away, his dad, he received his dad's golf clubs and they had his dad's name all engraved in the clubs. So Michael was a golfer. So for this YouTube, I, I have techniques for you. Absolutely. I have 
three new die sets and we're going to start very very simple and then get progressively harder and hopefully even if maybe the dies are not what speak to you because I swung for the fences that doesn't mean you have to <laughs> Hopefully you take away something that encourages you to pull out something you may already own in your crafty stash. I also want to let you know that we are having internet issues. Not like me personally, like our whole service area. So I'm not sure if this is going to upload in time. My current upload speed for internet is dial up. I can't even imagine when they told me that they were here until I don't know 9:45, they four of them from from our internet company, including three supervisors. It was crazy, but right now I have dial-up speed, so I can almost hear it going. You've got mail. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and keep this a little bit tighter on time so that it has a better chance of uploading. Now I say that. What this actually ends up being time-wise, I have no idea because I don't look at the clock. So it could be exactly like it normally is, but I'm going to try to tighten it up a little bit to make sure it loads on time. And if you're joining us during the premiere, which is every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. sunny California time, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, or 4 p.m. in the United Kingdom, we're live chatting over on this side. By all means, type in hello, hello, and we will say hello, hello back. All right, you guys, I'm going to get started. I'm going to tilt down. I'm going to show you some samples, and then we're going to, I'll show you all three sets. We're going to use all three sets and just get a little bit more, a little more technique-y as we go. So happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving weekend. If you're just getting back from Black Friday shopping, whew, <laughs> Well, actually, this is on Saturday. So if you're just getting back from, <laughs> from shopping over the weekend, I hope you found some wonderful goodies out there. And, um, and now it's time to just grab a cup of coffee or some hot chocolate or some apple cider, some spiced apple cider or whatever makes your heart happy. And let's just play a little bit, you and me. All right, you guys, I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started. It is me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Bye. Down we go. <laughs> Yes, so it is possible that I could get almost all the way through this YouTube and I lose power. I do not edit. I do not, um, I do not do voiceovers or dubbing or anything like that. So what you see is what you get. That means if, if my computer or my camera turns off, I'm going to have to reload and start all over again. Yay! <laughs> okay, so like I said, I swung for the fences. This one card was done by Belinda, and it is a layering die. I really meant it when I said I swung for the fences. We put that one with Belinda. And then I have my very sophisticated golfer for Mr. SMS. And this one I think was done by, oh, I think this one was done by Elena. Oh, I'm not sure. Doesn't have a name on the back. Hmm, no name. Usually they put their name on the back so I know who it is. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And this one was done by Claire. And here's my football guy. So again, a little more grown up, a little more sophisticated, a little more lifelike, not cartoony at all but can be used for all ages, absolutely, without question. This one was done by Claire, so I'm gonna guess this is Claire and that's Elena. Okay, so where are we gonna to start today? Well, I think we will start with my, maybe with my baseball player. Get my glasses on. And here is the set. So this is the entire set of my baseball guy. You've got three layering dies, and then you've got a background die. I always throw in a background die, and this background die, actually all of them, have words that correlate to the sport. So, so if you were to do all four of them together, that's what you're going to get. 
but you can use that background dye all on its own. And then because I have extra space, I pay for this whole sheet of metal. Because I have extra space here and there, I fill it in with anything we can. And here this um, on this set, we've got practice like you've never won, play like you've never lost, and swing for the fences. So, We've got the practice like you've never won, play like you've never lost sentiment, and then swing for the fences. You've got the base, you've got a bat, you've got a ball. There's just little goodies here and there all in this one set. Now, how do these work? Well, pretty simple. And I wanna read you what's on the, um, what's on the back of the, uh, the background one. You've got team, play ball, strike, you're out, home team, you know, just, words that um that would correspond with baseball so i'm going to pull out the three layering dies and we're going to start with those one two and three and maybe we'll Maybe we'll just do pull all four out. Why not, right? So then you're left with all the extras. The base and the, you've got a shadow for the base and the base and all your words and the baseball and a shadow for the ball. So let's put this one over here and let's play with these four dies. So this is where I'm going to start. And you can see that they are A2 size. They're big. They're not teeny tiny. And they do layer inside each other. So this is your die number one or your bottom die. And then number two adds a little more definition. And then layer three adds the final bit of definition to your, to your die cut. And then if you want to use your background die, you can. Now the nice thing about the background die is because it just has words on it from baseball. You don't have to use these at all. You may have your own cute baseball, you know, maybe a little more youthful, or a, it's just a great background if you have to do a guy card and they love baseball because it's got all the words right there for you. So I'm gonna keep this one really simple and I think we're gonna just mainly do it out of paper. I wanna bring this over. This is part of Black Friday. This is our memory box paper pad. You've got 48 sheets of six by six double-sided paper. Heavy weight, I think it's 110 pound. Yes, it's 110 pound cardstock. They retail for $12.99. We have them on Black Friday for $3.99. Oh my gosh, holy smokes artichokes. That is a value on this pack. And I thought it would go really, really well with this collection. So I'm gonna grab maybe a lighter sheet or a darker sheet. Hmm, decisions, decision. Hmm. No, maybe I'll grab a... Maybe I'll grab a medium color. And a dark color. And do I want to use a white in between? I don't know. Let's see, maybe we'll use a white in between. So just a piece of white cardstock. And I'm gonna cut my background, my die number one. I think I'm gonna cut it out of the light gray. I'm gonna cut it out of the light gray. So I'm gonna bring my Sizzix Big Shot machine on over. Back up just a little bit so you can see it. And this is a crank machine, not a switch. So I'm gonna send this on through. Now my dies do require a precision base plate. 
And a precision base plate is a Sizzix tool that if you are using intricate dies and you are struggling with them, maybe they don't even have to be my intricate dies, anybody's intricate dies, and you can't get them to cut well, you need a precision base plate. There's instructions on how to use it on one side and then a chrome plate on the other. And that chrome plate acts as your bottom cut plate. Normally with Sizzix products or with any Sizz uh, die cutting product in a Sizzix machine, we sandwich it between two, two or uh, cutting plates. So typically I would put down like a clear plate and then I'd put down my paper and then I'd put down my die and I would put down a do not cut plate. Typically that's what we would do and send it on through. But because my dies are so intricate, I mean they really can be intricate, we need to remove the bottom cut plate and add my precision base plate. And that's going to take the place of that bottom cut plate. And it allows the die, when you put the paper on, it allows the die to really bite into the paper because it's biting into the precision base plate and it really forces that cut. You've got a roller under here that you're gonna turn and that roller is going to add pressure as it goes through and that's what makes it cut. Something that has absolutely no blades is going to cut 110 pound paper. So I've got my I've got my base plate that comes with your machine. I've got my solo shim that has been um <laughs> used and loved. This allows you to do wafer dies. This is a wafer die. I've got my precision base plate with the directions face down. If you can read the directions, you are absolutely doing it wrong. You need to not be able to read. You want to see that mirror image. You want to see yourself in the mirror. Hello, my paper and my die. And again, my paper's 110 pound, so it's really a lovely weight, really nice. It's heavier than my cardstock. My cardstock only goes to 100 pounds, and at 399, it's a fabulous deal. So I'm going to put my die in, I'm going to sandwich it with my do not cut plate, and I'm going to send it on through. Now you might hear some creaks and cracks, and that's okay. See, that's okay, don't stop, keep going. That's just telling you that the die is doing what it's supposed to do. It's cutting that paper. Let's see. I'm not going to rotate it. I think. Uh, well, we'll see. I didn't rotate it. Let's see if all my little bits and pieces come out. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And there is die number one. Now if I wanted to stop here, I could. I could stop here and just use the silhouette. You still see he clearly he's a baseball player. You get the uh, that these are stands. Here's the steps coming down and he's swinging for the fences. I could just use this one die. It's up to you, but you have three to work with to make that dimension and that layer as detailed as you want it. I think die number two, I'm going to try white and just grab some white paper and let's see what happens. So cut my white paper down to size. And I have got, there's die number one, die number two, die number three. I've got my die. I'm going to bring my machine right back. And send it on through. Now this one's a little bit more intricate. There's less die, but what there is has a lot of intricacy to it. So I might rotate this one and bring it back. There 
and to rotate, I'm just going to go, whoop, that's it. It was this way, now it's that way. If you want, you can do this. Entirely up to you how you want it to get to rotate. And why do you need it to rotate? Well, because there's a sweet spot in your machine. Every machine's roller has a sweet spot. And if you're sending a die through and you're going front and back and front and back and you're not changing it, you're keeping it in the same place as you send it front and back and it's not cutting, that's because it's hitting the roller exactly the same way. You have to rotate it. You have to move it a little bit so that it will hit the roller in a different, unique way, allowing the cut to happen. Going back and forth and back and forth without changing anything isn't going to change anything. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. So all my pieces should just kind of fall out, and they do. And you can see that you've got an element of a baseball player, but he's kind of sketched. He's kind of um, not, the lines are not straight. The lines are, are sketched in, and that's to help give, start giving us some dimension. Ah, are you feeling it? Do you see it? Could use this one all by itself, if you, especially if you were doing it in black on a silhouette. But then we add him and he starts to come to life. Boy, you guys are either going to get it or you're going to think I'm crazy. And that's okay. I don't mind taking chances. Taking chances is what life's all about. I just want to be sure that when you are, are you, that I don't give you the same again and again and again. It can be very easy to do. So I try to step out of the box and see if I can bring something new that I haven't necessarily seen in a die form. Now I still have one last die. I'm not done yet. I still have one last die. And this is the most detailed. It has the least amount of die cut. I mean, the piece that comes out is very small, but it adds that last little piece of the puzzle that just finishes him off beautifully. Let's do a little rotate on this just so. There we go. And send him on through. Now, will these dies work with a switch machine? Yes. Will they work with a big shot? Yes. A big kick? Yes. A vagabond? Yes. A vagabond too? Yes. A Gemini? Yes. A Spellbinders Platinum? Yes. A Spellbinders Platinum 6? Yes. A Cuddle Bug? Yes. A Sizzix Fold Away? Yes. <laughs> a Sidekick from Sizzix? No, these are too big. Sidekick only lets you do... What, two and a half inches, I think? Am I just going to get real? Oh, I popped the whole thing. Hmm. Well, let's see if it cut because I pulled it off. I was trying to get that background piece off when I rotated, and I just pulled it off. So let's see what I got. Almost the whole thing. In fact, you might want to keep some of this just because it's a big piece. Like you could cut your words. You could use this for, for some of your sentiments if you wanted. And there he is. And again, he doesn't look like much. You kind of get the idea that it's a baseball player, right? Sort of, kind of. But what if, and let's grab, maybe I can grab a piece of... Hmm. How about this? So here's number two. And here's number three. Ooh. 
which just adds a little bit more dimension to him. But here is our bottom layer. So when you add all three together, you've really got a finished looking, amazing baseball player. Swinging for the fences. Get rid of that layer. And we're looking at this. Get rid of that layer. And we're looking at that. Don't know if you can do I suppose you can. You'll have to get him on there, but you can still get him there. And you can still get him here. It just depends upon how much detail you want your guy to have, or girl, depending on what colors you do it in. But the minute you slide this one underneath, it just kind of finishes it off. To have all three layers just kind of makes it special. Now, how do you put it down? And should we cut the last one? Um, yeah, we can. Maybe I cut the last one out of I have some black paper. Hello, black paper. Have any down here? Hmm. Yeah, I've got a piece of black right here. I've got some shimmer black. This one again is very intricate. Gosh, that almost feels, oh, it is. I was gonna say that almost feels like two sheets. Let's cut it out. And then we can build our guy. So this one is definitely gonna take a rotate without question. This is a very intricate die. All those little pieces have to pop out for the words, all of them. I could not imagine paper piecing this die back together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, no, no. I love to paper piece, but this one, <laughs> this die, the background die. <laughs> That would be like doing a thousand piece puzzle. <laughs> well, I suppose if the electricity's out, maybe I maybe I give it a whirl. <laughs> okay, so you can see that it's cut. Hopefully all of them. <laughs> I told you, can you see that? Hold on. Thousand piece puzzle, trying to figure out where all these little doodads belong. But like I said, if you don't have the electricity's out and you got not much to do, that's one of the nice things about um, having a big shot machine. Whether you have the switch, if you have the switch, I certainly hope you didn't get rid of your standard big shot machine because if the power goes out, so does your switch machine. <laughs> but if you still have an old fashioned hand crank, you are good to keep crafting. Okay. <laughs> now. What's the chance? Okay, here's the over and under question. I love playing over and under. Um, so do you think that I'm gonna get 
over 50% of this into Mr. SMS's trash? Or you think I'm going to get under 50% of this into Mr. SMS's trash? <laughs> Ready? Oh, yeah. If you were over 50%, you rock. <laughs> I did good. Let's just trim this on down and put it together and then we move to our next one this is just simple die cutting and layering and there are lots of layering dies out there now I think I was one of the very 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 first years ago who did some layering who did layering dies now they're pretty prevalent but you gotta watch on the price because a lot of times you have to buy them separately to get all the layers. And by the time you add it all up, it can, it can, be, it can be quite pricey. You really got to love it to buy it. So I try to keep all four of them, all four dies in one set for $29.99. We were able to do that all through the last two years. So I'm hoping that we're going to continue because Really, I, I'm hoping prices are going to come down soon, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use sticky dots. I'm going to use sticky dots to put this down. Make sure I'm on the right side. So sticky dots is an adhesive sheet of dots. There's hundreds and thousands of dots on here. Um, we have these, we manufacture these, and... I know there's another place that also carries them. We have 10 sheets that are eight by 10 and they're $10.99 each. That's the one thing I had to raise by a dollar, sorry. So, um, but you get 10 sheets and the nice thing about them is if you're using intricate dies, this is the best way to put them down. Where the die, where you see the paper, that's where the sticky dots are gonna adhere and where you see uh, no paper where all the words are those dies are going to stay exactly or those sticky dots are going to stay exactly there and that means that I could come through and maybe put some small words and pick up sticky dots you use them again and again and again until there is nothing left on your sheet now I'm just going to line this one up here and press it down. Now sticky dots do give you the opportunity to reposition before they become permanent. So I can pull this up and reposition before it becomes permanent. The longer you let it sit at some point, you're not going to be able to put it up, pull it up anymore without potentially tearing the paper. So let's trim it on down. Okay, so now you've got all your words easy peasy. And now you could, if you have little baseball dudes or or bat, well, you get a bat and ball with ours and a little a little um, base. But if you have anything else that's baseball related, now you've got a really great background. You've got a foundation to start from. Then let's go to our layer number one which is here. That's the one with the most amount of paper in the design. And let's just put him down. And rub, rub, rub. And pull him up. I can see I can see one little space right there and space right there 
and space right there. Okay, and then let's lay him down right over the top, top of my background. Line it right on up. And now I've started. Let's go layer number two, which I did in the white. And let's get him down. Pull them up and stick them on down. So sticky dots really are your friend if you're working with intricate types of uh, die cuts. And we'll just line him on up. And he's gonna add that extra element So every layer I do, I get another layer of detail, another layer of definition. And my last one, see he's going to pull up very few, I mean there's the sticky dots that are here that remain there or here are going to stay on the sheet. The sticky dots are just going to adhere where you see my baseball guy. Let's pull him up. And put him right on top. And you can see the sticky dots on the back side. Line them up and he's gonna give me the very last, very last element. And there he is, swinging for the fences. Now, I did it in monochromatic colors. You could absolutely do it in whatever colors your grandson or your son's baseball team is or your husband's favorite baseball team. Or, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there in the world, <laughs> and guy cards can be difficult. So now you could also do it for girls, you know, certainly make them, make them into whatever color your, your, um, your daughter's softball team is, or maybe she's playing little league. Who knows? She could be yay for her. So there's a start. Easy to do. One set of dies, get them all. Don't have to worry about buying individual dies to make up the whole set for $29.99. Now, let's move on to my golfer. So my golfer was done with Michael in mind. And like, you get a ton in here. You've got all four dies that make up the golfer, but then you've also got a golf ball and a tee and a, a putting green and some clubs and you've got a little trophy. And our words are, one shot at a time, tea time, confidence is king, and hole is hole in one. You got all of that in here. And the same thing with the background. The background die has caddy, four, bogey. <laughs> Don't get a bogey, right? <laughs> tea time. Um, gosh, I can't remember everything I, I put in here. Yeah, caddy, four, Tea time, 
bogey, hole in one, putter. So you've got it all in this die down here. So it's like the baseball die where all the words relate to golfing. So let's start with, let's start with, let's start with him. Come on, there we go. Yeah, let's start with him. You're like, him, I don't see him in there anywhere. He is, he's right here. <laughs> so let's pull these four dies off. I'm gonna move my baseball dies over. And let's play with these four. And we're gonna go one step further this time. I knew I wasn't going to get it. My gosh, that's strong. Okay, there we go. Whew. Let's put it underneath. Now I have my my gotcha tool. Everybody wants to know what, what they hear. That's my gotcha tool. My gotcha tool is a magnet, and it's meant for picking up dyes. So it's meant for holding dyes. So if you've got dies that you're working with picks them all up and you can keep it on your desk and as you're working with your dies that's my golfer <laughs> they just stay right there and they're very 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 handy everything just stays right there also if you lose a die in your trash can very easy to find. You just kind of swirl this around. Now this was made by Spellbinders for us. So I saw their original little diamond and we used to sell the little diamond. We might even still have some of them, but the, the surface area was so small. I thought we could do it a little bit better and make it flat so I can ship it to you. So a gotcha tool is just a giant magnet and it will hold all your dies without losing them. And it just, it's its a great little tool. Now, when we're sold out, we're sold out. I don't know how many we have left. I had to buy an awful lot of them because they had to make a mold for this. But when we're sold out, we're sold out. And if you don't have a way to keep your dies nicely while you're working with them, this is a great little, a great little tool. And it really does hold a lot. It's a strong magnet. All right, so now this is my, this is my baseball guy. This is my baseball guy. This is my baseball guy. It's golf, baseball, golf, golf, golf. Okay, let's put my baseball guys away for right now so I have my golf, golf, golf. And I'm gonna start with the background. So it's the one with the least amount of detail. It's almost hard to see what he is. So let's cut him. And how about we cut him in, let's just go right on back. Maybe we use the browns this time in here. So how about I cut him here? And then I already did, oh, maybe, maybe that brown. Okay, we're gonna play with the browns this time. So I'm going to cut my background, my first one, here. Bring them on over. And I know he's kind of hard to see, but that's the whole idea. It's about layering it so that when you get them all together, it creates that beautiful picture. No paper piecing required. You just line them up and get them down. Creaks and cracks are okay when you send it on through. The only time you want to stop is when the machine tells you no, the sandwich is too thick to go through. Then you want to stop. But little creaks and cracks, those are those are the, the telltale signs that the die is cutting. And it's amazing to believe that something that has no blades 
can cut through something so thick as 110 pound paper. It's crazy. All right, so we've got, we've got our first die. And maybe you can kind of see that he is right there and he's swinging the club. But I wanna take this a little bit further. I'm not gonna necessarily use the background die that comes with it. I wanna create my own background die. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I've got a couple different ways that I can do that. First one, I can start with some white paper. You all know that we've had the Stampendous products on sale. The actual company of Stampendous is no longer in business, but Stampendous will be, Fran will be doing licensed designing for Spellbinders. So Spellbinders right now is, I believe, selling off all the last remnants of the Stampendous inventory, and then Fran is going to start licensing design for them. So we've got their embossing powders. I mean, crazy embossing powders. There's um, 10 of them here. They retail, I don't know, for $45, $50, whatever. And I think we're doing these for $6.99. I don't know, they're at a crazy price for all 10. I've got two sets. I've got the 10 and I've got the 12. And again, crazy pricing. I think this one's $8.99 and you get all of it for $8.99. They have to go. They're not marked. You're going to have to swatch them out so you know what each color does. Some of them might be transparent. Some of them are opaque, but I'm going to use them with my, with my layering dies. Now I've taken a piece of Stacy tape, five inch Stacy tape. Ooh, I did not get it down very good. That was not good at all, but we're going to go for it anyway. Five inch Stacy tape, and I put it on a piece of white paper. I'm just gonna get that little crease on out. There, like it never even happened. Piece of Stacy tape. What is Stacy tape? It's a double sided adhesive. This is a five inch roll, and if I tear it, and put it on a piece of paper. And pull that liner piece off, that top piece off. It will expose adhesive underneath, which is super strong. Not a little strong, it's super strong. Like really strong. <laughs> like if there's somebody in your family who works out in the garage and does like handiwork, you may want to hide your Stacy tape because it tends to end up in their crafty stash. Well, their, their work stash. Now it comes as big as six inches, so it comes one inch bigger than this, but it also comes as thin as an eighth of an inch. This is a quarter inch. So we have sizes from an eighth of an inch all the way up to six inches and everything in between. It is heat resistant. That means you can use embossing powder on it, and that's what we're going to do today. So I've done my little background here, right? He's right there. And I'm gonna pull my Stacy tape up. Now the minute I pull this liner off, the very minute I pull this liner off, I have to do something with it because it's all exposed. It's sticky. I could put the liner back down because the liner is the one thing that doesn't stick to Stacy tape is the liner. So if I decide, oh no, I don't wanna use it yet, I can put the liner back down and it's good. You don't have to do anything more. You can put it away and come back to it at a later date. So you always wanna save some of the liner. We do lots with that liner. Now I'm gonna put my die right down on it. There's my die cut. And I'm gonna take that liner and I'm gonna use that liner to press that die down, that die cut down onto the Stacy tape. And look at, see, it's the one thing that doesn't stick. So I, I don't wanna try and push my fingers to get it to down. Then it's gonna be all, you know, this is gonna be lifting up with my fingers. Just take the liner and this way you're sure that your die has, your die cut has adhered really well to that Stacy tape without having to use your fingers. Now 
So for this guy, I want to do the background. He's got some clouds. He's out in the sky. You know, he's got the sky backdrop. He's got the green down here. He's got a little putting hole right there. So I want to take and I want to make the background. Could I die cut him like I had done before and put a background behind? Absolutely. I could have just taken blue paper or something like that and put it behind. But this time I wanted to create and I'm going to use the embossing powders from Stampendous that we have. They're, they're a phenomenal deal. And the last Stampendous deal um, special that we'll have will be in December. So I think I'm going to take open this one and I think it's $8.99, $9.99. It's a crazy price for all of them. Two, and there's no duplications. So no duplications. So maybe I take out this one and what do we want to do for the grass? And this one, and maybe we want some white, not sparkly white, so maybe this one. All right, I think that those will be the ones I use right now. Let's push these out of the way. Well, maybe I do want to, maybe I'll use a little bit of this one. Why not? Oh no, that one's better. I see it. This one. Oh, that's a pretty blue, right? Okay, so I've got four different colored embossing powders here because I'm going to make sky and grass. I've got my sticky that's exposed. Y'all have embossing powders, and if you don't, this is a great value to get a whole bunch of colors for almost no money. And I'm just gonna go in here, and whether you have little dipper spoons or you have to go to Baskin Robbins, I'm just gonna kinda sprinkle some. And maybe a little bit of the darker color. I'm just going to kind of spring. Now I'm going to try and stay out of my clouds. I don't want too much in my clouds. It's going to blend into them a little bit, and I'm going to have to be okay with that. But I'm going to try and kind of stay a little bit out of my clouds if I can, which is why I'm using my little spoon here. So Baskin Robbins, <laughs> just if you ask for 31 flavors so you get 31 little spoons, make sure you buy an ice cream. <laughs> we got these from US Art Quest, and unfortunately, I think that they have gone out of business. A lot of companies we did business with have decided to retire. All right, so I've got a little bit going on there. And because it's on my sticky, as I move it, it's going to adhere to wherever there's sticky showing. So I can just move it up and over. Because the tape is heat resistant, I'm able to emboss right onto the tape. So I'm just going to kind of move it all around. Now you're gonna use more embossing powder this way than you would if you were using a Versamark because this is adhering to it, really adhering to it. It's a really good way, if you've got embossing powder through the years, this is a really great way to kind of use them up. And ultimately, you're just kind of painting. 
Now it's going to get into my clouds a little bit. Nothing I can do about that, and I'm going to be okay with that. And I think for my clouds, I'm going to try and use a really chunky embossing powder. And this is chunky. Now, all embossing powders are the same. I don't know if I can get it close enough. All embossing powders are the same. What makes them different is how finely they are ground. Look at how chunky this one is. Look at how fine that is. That means when you melt this one, it's not going to have the spread because the granules are so fine. But when you melt this one, because it's so chunky, it's going to spread more. So I'm just going to put some of this and I'm going to let it go into my blue if it needs to. And this you kind of have to almost pat down a little bit because it's so chunky. It's almost like grains of, it's, it's like coarse salt versus a standard embossing powder, which is not. Standard embossing powder is ground super fine, and then a detailed embossing powder is ground even finer than a standard. Okay, so I think I'm okay. And I'm just gonna take my little fluff brush from Walmart, Target, the dollar store, used to be a dollar, now some of them, some, somebody said, I can't remember who it was, um, I can't remember who it was on live chat that said that it was like $6 up in Canada for that brush. I'm like, holy smokes, artichokes. Down here on average, they're about $3. And it's up to me. I could just, if I don't want to throw it away, if I just want to move it around to the rest of my sticky, I'm going to end up cut. Oh, Stacy, got it in my green. I'm going to end up cutting that away anyway. So got some blue in my green. Because I've got grass down here. And I've got that little hole in one cup. Don't you wish it was a hole in one? I know I know Michael, I think he's made three hole in ones in his lifetime. Now mind you, the only hole in one I ever made was on the the mini putt putt <laughs> green. <laughs> and you would have thought that I won a million dollars when I did that. <laughs> I didn't win anything, but you would have thought that I I had I had won the winning lottery numbers. I was so excited when I hit a hole in one in the mini putt putt. <laughs> And then, I don't know, what color do we want to do? What color do we want to do for the hole? I suppose we could do maybe, is this a dark brown? Hmm, I don't know what that is. Give it a little whirl. Okay. So now I can get rid of everything that I don't need. And it's not going to stick to my die cut because my die cut doesn't have any Versamark or sticky on it. And now I can heat set. Take my heat gun. and start to melt. So all embossing powder is, is a plastic, a ground plastic. And when you add heat, that plastic is going to get to a temperature high enough to make it melt. Can you use this on your hair? No. Can you use a hair dryer to do this? No. Your hair dryer isn't going to get hot enough to melt that plastic. And this is going to singe your hair <laughs> like that. So. I can start at the top, and as I see my embossing powder starting to turn, I can move it.
the larger granules are going to take longer to melt. But I'm on tape, not on a Versamark. You can see where the embossing has started because it's got a high gloss finish unlike over here. Here there, it's still matte, there's still no gloss, but here high gloss finish. So you can see where the embossing powder is going from a powder and changing into that solid. And because you're on, because you're on tape, you don't have to worry if you accidentally touch it. And with Versamark, if I was using a Versamark, which we will use in a little bit, and I touched the paper, the embossing powder would wipe right off. But I'm using adhesive to hold that embossing powder down. So I don't have to worry about touching it. It's still going to stay exactly where I put it. So let's just get this one done. And I can get it super close. This is the Sizzix branded tool. I can get it super close. And I'm just going to start to make a sky background. Doesn't look like anything yet, but it will. Okay, I think I'm good. You look at that and it kind of looks like a hot mess. But wait. So I think I've got all my embossing done. I don't see any place where, oh, maybe right there. I don't, can you see how it's a little dull right there? See, it's glossy here, but a little dull right there. That means that I just might need to hit that a little bit right there to get it to turn. There we go. Okay, let's cut the rest. I'm gonna put this aside and let's cut the rest of my guy. So my next color, let's do, hmm. <laughs> I went light, I think that that's, Maybe we'll just stick with this one. We'll go with this one. Let's do my next guy. So this one has a little more detail than this one. Let's cut them. Bing, bang, boom. Bing, bang, boom. Ooh, I might get a thump. 
Yep, don't, I know that sounded terrible, right? But that's because I put my die straight, it's on a parallel to the roller here. I didn't kind of tweak it just a little bit, so it had to grab this entire piece of the metal all at once and you get a, you get a kathump without question. I know it sounds bad, <laughs> but it's okay. And then let's see, do I need to rotate? I don't. Looks great. That kathump just scares everybody. All right. So let's see what we've got. And can you see where I'm going? Grab my sticky dots. Give a nice press. Pull up. and line them up and put them down. Corner to corner. Just line them right on up and put them on down. We're getting there. And then the last one for this set is here. Assuming I don't do the word background. And is that the darkest color I've got? No, let's try in the gray. Is that the darkest color I've got? Remember to rotate just a little bit. And if you want to be able to get a better rotate, you can trim the paper down. So because my paper is as wide as my die cutting machine, I can only rotate just a little bit right on the paper. But if I were to cut the paper down, that gives myself a whole nother inch or so to play with. So now, now I can totally put my die on an angle so you don't get that huge big thump. Okay. See, no big thump. Let's see. That looks good to me. And out of this one, this is the throwaway piece, <laughs> which is why when you've got a pad of paper for $3.99 and you've got 48 sheets of it, it makes sense to use it. <laughs> okay. And then I can go right on top. Yeah, it's not enough of a contrast for me. Okay, so that's not enough of a contrast for me. It's just too, too blah. I think I wanna make this one black, shiny black. I wanna do shiny black out of here. So how am I gonna do that? Remember when I said we were gonna use our Versamark? This is where we're using it. Let me grab a piece of copy paper. 
So this is Versamark. Versamark is an embossing medium. So I've been using Stacy tape in place of Versamark because my tape is heat resistant. So you can go ahead and add that heat and it's not gonna harm the tape at all. But I wanna just do this. I don't want to put this on Stacy tape because then how am I going to get the whole thing out? It's just, it's too much. Versamark is easier. Could I take a piece of paper and put Stacy tape on it and then die cut him out and then put um, my embossing powder on it? Yes. The issue I have with that is that this is all throwaway. So all that tape you just used, you're either going to have to use it somewhere else Hold on to it so you can die cut other things out of, to, out of it. But to throw this much away seems like a waste to me. So that's when you decide where it makes sense to use the different products. They all are going to do the same thing. I'm just going to Versamark him right on up. They're all going to do the same thing. But for something like this, I would much rather use Versamark than to waste that tape. But to do a background, I would much rather use the tape than the Versamark because it cements also my first layer down. Okay, so I've put Versamark over all of him. We'll know when we emboss whether I got the whole thing done or not. I'm going to move this out of the way. I am not going to put my embossing powder on top of this because everywhere you see Versamark, that embossing powder is going to cling to and it'll just be an absolute waste. So grab another sheet of copy paper. This is we're having Mr. SMS's office <laughs> right here. I can use his inexpensive copy paper and let's take a, let's take a black. Yeah, let's take a black. And let's first mark over the whole thing, or embossing powder over the whole thing. And I am literally going to dump almost this entire jar on top of him. Because I can put it back. It's only going to stick where the sticky, is, or where the uh, first mark is. So yeah, I'm dumping the entire jar, but when I'm done, I'm going to put it right back into the jar. Because it's not such a solid image, it's a little bit harder to make sure that you've got the whole thing. Okay, so there it is. And that's got powder all over it. Let me put this powder back in And we're just going to put it right back into our jar. And just like that, I've refilled my jar. Now, when I look at this, I can see I missed a spot right there. See how I missed it? And this is not like the Stacy tape. If I touch this, I can wipe away the powder. It's not an adhesive. It, the Versamark is not an adhesive. It is a medium that stays wet long enough for you to add your embossing powder. So that means I need to go back in and I just need to hit this space like that. And then let's drop some powder on it. All I have to do is go back in and add where I missed. And now I'm good to go. So I'm gonna put that off to the side for a minute while I put this back in my... And I just kinda tap, tap, tap. And get it all back in. Yay. And now let's heat set this. Heat. 
tool, please. Thank you. Close up my jar because I know me, I'll spill. <laughs> I know myself. And let's heat set. And you're going to be able to see the embossing powder go from that matte black to a shiny black. Let me hold this up just so you can see. It also gives stability to the paper. It makes it more rigid because now you've coated the paper with plastic. Shiny, that's where the heat has been. Non-shiny, no heat yet. I need to make sure that those are shiny. Okay, looks good to me. So now my whole guy is shiny. And let's put him here. Oh yeah, that contrast is much better. But what if you don't like the little pits Sometimes you get with embossing powder. You want it to have that really super high gloss, smooth finish. A oh, holy smokes artichokes. Yes, easy peasy. You can double emboss, you can triple emboss until you get what you want. Versamark right back on my die. Right over the top of what I just did. I know that there are some of you out there that always double emboss because it's going to give you a smoother, more elegant finish. Some of you triple emboss. I sometimes triple emboss. It depends upon what I'm doing because I want it to have that raised kind of domey look. Embossing powder again all over. Because you saw, I'm just going to put it right back in. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I think I've got it everywhere. Put that over here. Tap, tap, tap. Put it right back in. Let me grab my jar. Put it right back in. Tap, tap, tap until I'm empty. And let's see what I get this time with a second round of embossing. So it's melting the first and the second, melting them together. It's gonna take a few seconds to dry and I haven't done the whole thing yet, but I want you to see, look at that smooth, high gloss finish here versus what we had before.
Okay, give it just a second to cool. Once it's cool, you're able to pick it up and it won't it won't get all over you. It just takes the, the second or two for plastic to cool down. And now look at what we've got. Look at that beautiful high gloss finish. Can I go again? Probably. Can I go again? Probably. How glossy and how um, how smooth of that look do you want? How much of a little dome do you want being made? Okay. Wash, rinse, and repeat. We're just going to do this super fast. This is a third coat of embossing powder. It only takes just a few minutes to do. Even all three coats, it doesn't take long, but the effect is so dramatically different than just doing a single coat. Okay. So because it's opaque, opaque, I struggle with that word, you can use any old paper you want. That black is going to cover it right up. But when you're getting 110 pound paper, 48 sheets of it for $3.99, why wouldn't you use it? And I'm just walking it along as I see it change. And you can see it go from a matte finish to a glossy finish. And I'm going to give it a second to cool. It's not so much dry time as it is cool time. And once the plastic is cool, it's good to pick up. Holy smokes artichokes. That's embossing powder and that is triple embossed, which then I can take as my final element on this one. And it just looks amazing. So, sticky dot. Remember, it's paper on the back. This is just inexpensive paper. Well, it's really expensive paper, but we have it inexpensively for you. I've made almost an, an epoxy, an epoxy sticker. You know those little domes and stuff? Well, those are plastic. I've put so much embossing powder on here. I've melted so much plastic that it's almost like an epoxy die cut. It's yummy. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Up, and it's paper on the back. And down. And you're just going to line it all up, corner to corner. And now we need to get rid of all the noise, all of this extra around that we don't care about. We're just going to snip that right on off. I'm going to move that. 
There we go. Back in place. Back in place. Now remember, when you're using any kind of adhesive tape, having non-stick um, scissors is a big help. Big help. Keeps the sticky from sticking to your scissors. These are from, these are Westcott Titanium. Non-stick. It's always good to have a pair of non-stick scissors. Oh, see, I think that looks cool. What do you think? And look at the gloss on there. And literally, if I was not teaching you this, this would have taken me maybe 15 minutes to do, said and done, all the way through, from the die cutting to all the embossing. About 15 minutes. So we started here, where we just did him out of paper. But then we moved here, where we added some embossed elements. Let's move to our last one. Let's move to our football player. And let's pull all four off. I'm going to move my move my dies over there and pull my football player guys off. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to create the background. So here's my base. This is my first. Here's my second. And if you can believe it, this is the last die. It doesn't look like much, but it is. So I'm going to start with my first. And I think... Let's cut them out of white. Let's put some Stacy tape on a piece of white paper. That'll do. Get it big enough? <gasps> I don't know if I did. Okay. So let's see. Did I make it big enough? Uh, nope, I'm a hair short. All right, let's do it again. Let's grab a bigger piece of paper and I'll give myself a little bit more room this time. Now, I'm not going to throw this away. This is good. Until I pull that sticky off, I can use, I can just stay, save this forever. Until I expose that sticky, so I might use, just save this until I need to die cut some words or whatever I want to do. But let's do a little bit more. go. Now I know I have plenty. Plenty. Just like the 24 pound turkey I cooked. I have plenty. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't know what I was thinking. All right. So I'm going to cut him out of, I don't know that it's going to matter. Let's just do a light color. Yay. 
Ooh. <gasps> what if, oh man, he's just a little too small. All right, we're gonna try and fudge him right on there. What if I cut him out and I make him a, okay, so that piece of paper I had, paper on the back, sticky on the top. Let's cut him out. and have the sticky on the top. Normally, we would have the sticky on the bottom and we'd be able to make him a sticker because you'd peel it off and stick him on down. I want the sticky on the top like we've been doing because I'm gonna use embossing powder on him first. What? I know, I have a thought. Hmm. Let's kind of sandwich him in there close. I think that's pretty close. And let's die cut him out. Zoop. Do you hear that zoop? Now I am gonna rotate because I'm asking the die to go through adhesive and paper and liner. So I'm just gonna send it on back and I just did a full 180 degree rotate. Oh, I think I got it. all my little doodads to come out. So I have made him into not a sticker, because I'm not gonna stick him, I'm not gonna pull my liner off and put him down on something. I'm gonna emboss him. What if we Pulled the liner off. And we embossed him. Pull my liner off. And what if we throw embossing powder down on top of him? My husband is a Raider fan. All right. Don't feel bad for us. <laughs> if there's any husbands <laughs> or spouses who are into football, wives who are into football, they're like, oh, you poor thing, you. <laughs> We're Raider fans and they're black and silver. So what if I did him? And I'm just gonna do all of him in silver. And I don't have to use Versamark right now if I don't want to, because he's pretty big. So a very little of the Stacy tape, you know, was thrown away. Make sure I've got him all over. Oh, I missed it right there. All right, well, we'll make do. And Dust them off. See, I missed the tape by that much, <laughs> but I was close. Let's put it there. Let's put my silver embossing powder back. Now, again, these are from Stampendous, and this is the last of the last that they had. So to get them at the price we got them for, they're not labeled. They come in a pack of either 10 or 12. I don't believe there's any duplications. There's not duplications from previous bundles. And for the price, holy smokes, artichokes. Okay, let's melt him, right?
and you can see where the embossing so I don't have to worry so much because this is on tape so it's not going to wipe off where the silver has embossed and where it hasn't and because I didn't use Versamark he did, the embossing powder doesn't come off and you can watch it turn it is like magic Okay, I think he looks pretty good. All done in embossing powder. Now, let's take the next one and let's cut this. I still have my background. I still have this one. I'm still not done. I know I have to do this one, but let's cut him the next layer and let's emboss him too. Now this time, he's less. There's a lot less. So I'm not gonna use the Stacy tape. I'm gonna Versamark this one, I think. I only wanna use Stacy tape when there's enough of the image to warrant it because I don't wanna waste it. Versamark is a lot less expensive than Stacy tape, well, than any double-sided adhesive for that matter, not just Stacy tape. But that tape does last you a long time. It goes a long ways. Let's see if I was able to get, and we do a lot with it. Oh, nope, I was off. I didn't get my bottom. Let's see if I can reline it up and send it back through. I just missed a little bit of my bottom. So really that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit that place where I missed the die. Let's see. Yep, that's good. Let's get all the little fallout pieces out. And can you see why I didn't use the tape? Because there's such little here. By the time you're done, I would have wasted a tape when the Versamark can do the same. But on the background, there was enough there. Let's Versamark. And what color do we want to make him? I've got oodles of embossing powder here. When I say oodles, I mean oodles. Do we want to go red? I can hear somebody on live chat saying, red is good. <laughs> Do we want to go green? Green is good. Okay, I think I've got them pretty well versa marked up. And if not, I can come back and add. You saw I can double emboss. Let's see what color embossing powder we go with. I got red. Got orange. Dump, 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 dump. Man, that's a lot of embossing powder you're dumping. I know, but I'm going to put it all back in, so it's okay. Okay. 
pretty much emptied the whole jar. But I want to make sure I've got them everywhere. I'll see. Nope, I'm wiping it off. No, I did not get it everywhere. That is for sure. We're going to have to double emboss him. Look at the spaces that I missed. All right, let's put my embossing powder back and we'll do it twice. I'm not going to throw it away. Don't throw it away. No. Just do it again. Let's go real quick and heat and move on. Boy, oh boy, I did not do a great job there. Not at all. But live and learn. Let's try again. And maybe I'm not even sure I'm loving the red. Hey, okay, orange. Uh, I don't know. We're going to try. I'm going to put orange over the top. See what happens. All it is is paper. That's all it is is paper. That's all I'm playing with is paper. You don't like it? No big deal. It's embossing powder. Go back over it again. This time I'm going to do orange and see what I think of the orange. All right. Let's throw orange on. What's the worst that can happen? We hate it. Even then, I would finish it. I have learned that what I like and what somebody else likes can be totally different things. <laughs> okay, now I've got the orange. Put them aside. I like the orange actually. I think the orange is kind of cool. We'll see what it turns to when we heat. Oh, Stacy, okay. There, good example. Remember how I said, do not, do not, there we go, perfect. And because I do not edit, I cannot edit this out. I did my Versamark and then I immediately put my embossing powder on top and see my embossing powder stuck to where my Versamark is. Can I get this off and put it back in my, my tub? No, I mean, thankfully, look at it still has a ton. No, because it's got Versamark um, mixed into it now. This just has to be thrown away. See, I did exactly what I said not to do, but at least you saw me do it and you see why you don't. That orange is gold. What the what? Holy smokes, artichokes. It's not orange at all. Holy smokes, it's a metallic. Okay, that's kind of rock star. Who knew? I had no clue. I thought I was going to get just a straight orange. This color is yummy. Wow. Had no idea. Oh, 
I touched it. That's okay. Look at that. That color is, it's, it's, I don't even know what color it is. It's a metallic orange. I'm going to do one more time with an embossing. I'm going to get it one more time. This time to make sure <laughs> that I don't accidentally do it on the paper. So now I'm on three. Did the red. Meh on the red. Digging. Loving. I know they probably don't. They, nobody says the word digging anymore. But loving this fabulous metallic orange. I would have never guessed that. Never in a million years. I guess that's why it's one of the specialty ones. This is, if this is the uh, metallic-y, orangey, pearlescent, oh, it's the pearlescent ones. That makes sense. Those retail for $5.99 each, and I think the whole set of 10 is like $6.99. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set that over here. We're going to heat that one more time just because I can. See, look it, <laughs> no problem. Didn't put my Versa mark down on there. Wise decision. But at least you saw what happens when you do, and you do have to throw the paper away. You cannot salvage it. just going all the way around and watching it smooth itself on out. Let's give it a second to cool. It just needs to cool. There's no drying time. It's plastic. Once the plastic is cool, it's good to go. Oh, that looks good. Okay, let's do the last piece. Um, do we want to do the last piece in black? Let's just do the last piece. I might get a kathump because I'm pretty much straight on. I know it sounds horrible, but it'll be okay. And thump. Let's see if I have to go back. Almost this entire piece is going to be fall away. Again, the reason I'm not using Stacy tape is because I'm throwing, I'm throwing that much away. That would be a good a waste of a waste of great product. Okay, I'm gonna wipe down my craft mat. 
I'm just going to burst a mark right here. Oh, got a few pieces I didn't pop out. And this is going to add that final detail to what was a raider, <laughs> but not anymore. <laughs> Grab some black. We're gonna do this whole thing in embossing powder, even the background. Oh, somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Sorry. Can't talk, teaching. Hope everything's good. <laughs> Could be that we lost power at my house. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. Put all of this back. Hit it with my heat tool. So my craft mat is heat resistant. Do you want to do one layer with embossing powder? Do you want to do, do you just want to do the whole thing in, in, I'm going to do one more, um, in paper? Do you just want your top layer like we did on the golf guy in embossing powder to really make it stand out? What works for you? I'm going to do a second layer because I just really like the finish of it. And since I'm here, and you're here, well, you may not be here anymore, but if you're still here, it just looks that much better, in my opinion. Gosh, and on the, the orangey gold one, that was three, because I had started with red and decided, nope, don't like that. Okay, move them out of the way. Move them out of the way. And away we go. Look at how quick it turns. So what was that, two minutes total? To add that second layer, two minutes maybe. Give it a second to cool. And once it's cooled down, it's good to go. Wow, that looks great. Wipe off my craft space. And one, two. Oh, this is a good card. 
Maybe I save this one. I make this one and I save it for somebody. That's going to be a good card. Oh, yeah. Look at him go. Okay. But then we've got to come back to here. You know what? I'm going to adhere these. I'm going to put all of these down to each other. And then we'll keep going. So I'm going to layer my number two onto my number one. Sticky dot it on down. In fact, I can just do both of them at the same time. Why not? I can multitask with the best of them. down pull him up put him down And now let's do the background real quick. Woo! For the background, all I have to do is peel off that very first sheet I started with, remember? Put him down. Make sure that I cement him down really good. And then take my embossing powder one more time. Let's see what we get. So a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Gosh, I should do that orange. Where's that orange? right in his helmet, right before I do anything else. He's got a little place in his helmet that I'm just gonna do a little bit of orange. There, done. And maybe a little bit of my darker blue just to add some contrast. Take my finger, rub it all into place. Doesn't matter if it goes out, because I'm going to cut that off. Oh, stay, stay, stay. Don't rub too hard, Stacy. I've got my blue sky and then I think I'm going to do gold glitter down below. Uh, I know there was a glitter embossing powder in here. Gold glitter embossing powder. 
Knew it. Take my little fluff brush, get rid of all the excess, which really there wasn't too much of. Yay. And let's heat set. Give it a second to dry, not to dry, to cool. Don't want to touch it till I know it's cool. That feels pretty good. Oh, that's hot up there. Still too hot. Cool, cool, cool. Give a nice press. And let's cut off. Oh, he looks so cool. Cut off the noise. So we started super easy, just with paper. And then we took a little bit of a step by using some embossing powder to add detail and dimension and depth and texture and shine and just beautiful. And then we went all out. So we started here, just using monochromatic to swing for the fences. Then we said, well, maybe we can do a little bit more than that. Maybe we can try a little bit more. And we went here, just adding the embossing powder as our background, and then just as the top layer and doing double embossing, sometimes triple. And then we said, throw caution to the wind and we are going to do the entire thing out of embossing powder and you would never know that the paper we used was three dollars and 99 cent memory box 110 pound paper because that embossing powder just covers it what do you think even if the dyes you're like yep yeah, nope not for me Hopefully the technique is something that you can get behind that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Because you do, you have oodles of options. And if you need guy cards, I think these are great. So done for Michael's family, done for my family, and done for Michael. 
Yay! Look at just how lively. I mean, these just absolutely come to life. Holy smokes, I should have thrown a little white back there, huh? Oh, well. Okay, so that is what we worked on today. It was a lot. But it was fun, and it was easy, and it was really using very limited amounts of product. Really limited amounts of product. We didn't go too crazy into anything. We have the memory box on sale, $3.99. Regular price is $12. Beautiful paper. Emboss over it, don't emboss over it. Doesn't make a difference, you're gonna love it. We have the two embossing powder packs. And they are on sale under the, the um, Stamp It Up With Stampendous event. Oh, that's the glitter. I've got glitter too for you. So the two embossing powder packs. I think one is $8.99 and one is $6.99 is what I think it is. I think this one's $8.99 and this one's $6.99. So it's almost like this one's like buy one, get the rest free. And this one's like buy two and get the rest free. We didn't use the glitter today, but I'm going to throw it in there too because it's also part of the Stampendous event. Same thing. The glitter's amazingly valued. Crazy pricing. So could you use the glitter instead of the embossing powder with Stacy tape? Oh, you bet you can. Then we have, then we have dies. So the Simply Defined dies, there's three sets, four dies each. The football, so you're gonna get the background, you're gonna get the three layers that make up my dude, all the words, all the extras, and here he is all done. Then we've got our Simply Defined Golfer. So you're going to get all the pieces to make him up. The background, the extras, the words, and here he is all done. Something's going on. And then we have my baseball player, your swing for the fences. And here he is. All right, samples. Super quick samples. These are Claire. right very cool these are not these are elena these are elena sorry elena and then elena did the backgrounds and she's got happy birthday on there and she did the background yeah you get the hole in one and happy birthday with the footballs so those are Elena. These must be Claire. Gosh, I don't know. This one doesn't have a name on them, so I'm not sure if this is Claire or Elena, but it's great. Whoever did it, love it. Right? So very cool. And here. Oh, I'm supposed to, oh, I've got two of them. Just using the, the extras that you get with the set. And look at this one. Look at that background paper with this one. That looks amazing. Yeah, this one's Claire. I'm supposed to open it. So play like you've never won. Yeah, that's what you want to play like. You want to play like you've never won because you want to fight for it. And then I have Belinda. And Belinda made a wreath 
for champions. Look at this. So super cool. That's just one die. That's just using the base to get the silhouette. And look at her golfer. Great job, Belinda. Really great job. That's a fabulous card. Love that card. And last but not least, I have Doris. And here we have Doris swinging for the fences. And I don't know where she found this paper, but that paper's amazing. And, oh, did, am I supposed to go inside? No, yay. Okay, <laughs> and here's her golfer. One shot at a time. And here she just used the elements. Practice like you have never won. Look at, she cut the top of them. She's so clever. And the last thing that I have are two layouts. This one is Claire's layout. Let me back it up just a little bit. Claire's layout. So you've got the baseball. Now she cut the frame off, part of it just to give you here. And she's got the football player and same thing. She cut part of the frame off. That looks amazing. And oh my gosh, Claire, that one's Claire, right? Yeah, Claire, this one's phenomenal. This one is really just amazing. Love it. All right, you guys, that's it. It's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you saw something you didn't know you could do. Hopefully you remembered you could do something that you forgot you could do. And maybe just encourages you to try something new and a little different and play because it is only paper. All right, where are you gonna find all this great stuff? Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Don't forget to shop local if you can. I hope everybody's having an amazing Thanksgiving. And until next week, it is me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com saying, bye everybody. I gotta get home, my turkey. That could be Michael saying this, the, the turkey's smoking. <laughs> bye everybody. Ha, ha, ha.